Hello there. So I am going to give you all a quick rundown of two things. So I'm making changes to my current mural for the CAP study material, because as you all know, last year in August, the CAP was uh, revised. Okay, so as of August 15th, 2021, there is a new exam out there. So I am modifying what I currently have to be sure I'm including all of the things that they've added to the new CAP exam. All right, but also today, what I wanna do is go into detail on what the information system security officer's uh, role is in, in the risk management framework process, okay? So I'm gonna highlight everywhere on this board where I talk about the ISO, and we're gonna go over what they do. And this is because I got a question on uh, YouTube and about the ISO role, and I don't have anything on my channel about the ISO role. So I said, let me just come to this mural and, uh, and bring that out. So really quickly, again, the mural, the, the entire thing is if you are studying to obtain your certified authorization professional, certification through ISC squared, okay? okay? So this is the information that I'm putting together. Uh, I've added a lot of stuff here. If you saw the old one, things like uh, the scope, which is what they talk about in the new exam. I'm, I'm showing where what we do here in the RMF process also corresponds to what you will find in your incident response plan, okay? So I, I'm making those connections here for you in the very beginning, because I think it's easier to remember and it's easier to grasp that way. And of course, here are the roles and the impact levels and questions and all that, but I'm not gonna get into all that here. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I am going to search for all the places that I mentioned the ISO role on this mural, okay? Uh, what is it, 15, all right, so now, <clears throat> We're going to go to those places so I can give you uh, a good idea of what the ISO role is, uh, what you all do, and how you can get real-time practice to really understand what your role is and, um, and how you can you know, contribute to making sure your organization's information systems are everything that they need to be. Okay. So here, I mentioned the ISO role. Now, when I say ISO, I don't mean this one. I mean the ISSO. Okay, all right, that's what we're talking about here. So you have a role in every step of the RMF process. Now, let me tell you, the new CAP exam, if you're interested in that, does not just talk about RMF anymore, okay? They're bringing in other risk management frameworks like the, uh, the ISO 27001 um, and, and some more that they mentioned in there, okay? Which I'm gonna also incorporate in here some kind of way, but we're sticking with the RMF because that's like the foundation of, uh, of a lot of things. If you understand this, you're gonna understand uh, most of what the other ones are. You see you have a role. Uh, so at the beginning here, now step zero of the RMF process, this is where everything is coming together, okay? So if your intention is to create a hurricane, then you need all the processes that need to come together for the hurricane, the warm water, the, the warm air, all that stuff, okay? So this is what's happening in step zero here. You're getting everything together, all your appointment letters as an ISO, an ISSO, you should have an appointment letter, okay? Most organizations will give you an appointment letter uh, as an ISO, uh, at least the ones that I've been in, okay? And uh, sometimes that appointment letter is signed by the, the Chief Information Security Officer, okay? Because you are very important, okay? Ain't nothing, a lot ain't gonna, gonna happen if you are not there, <laughs> okay? You have a very important role. So step one is the cat is categorized, okay? And here, uh, is one of the things you will do in this, uh, for this step, you will hold those categorization review meetings. Now, this is where we get into, okay, what's the scope of the information system? Okay, what kind of information is gonna be in here? Is it gonna be low, moderate, high? You know, what, what's, what are we doing here? Okay, is there privacy information that's gonna be included? All of that, right? So we're having those meetings, we're having those discussions because you're gonna, you know, if there is privacy information, there, you know, there's, uh, there are processes for that as well. Uh, that you're going to have to contribute to. Step two, um, you're going to 
And, oh, and here too, I put the number of days, the uh, potential, you know, normally this is how long uh, these things would take, okay? Uh, so this is select, right? Where you're selecting these controls and, and you're gonna have a role in that, uh, uh, in that, as well as in tailoring uh, those controls. Step three, you you have, a, now this isn't all you would be doing, okay? I'm, I'm just pulling out some things for you to see here. Uh, you're gonna have these uh, assessment readiness reviews for implement, you know, which should take about two months uh, to, to do. Uh, now you have roles in here too. Why, oh, these are highlighted right here. Uh, step five, authorize. We have here, you're going to be working with a lot of people, okay, in these authorization meetings when you're talking to the authorize, uh, authorizing official. And then uh, step six, so you're involved throughout the whole thing, okay, because let me show you, let's go over here. All right, so this is the RMF process. Now let's go over here. Mm, can I get this? I don't want to clear that, but I'm going to have to clear it because I want to show you this right here. Okay. Now the information uh, system security, so this is you right here, right here, may be appointed by the ISSM. And we're gonna talk about the ISSM too, because it's important to know who you are in relationship to the ISSM, all right? Uh, must be capable of configuring and managing the security configurations of your assigned system, okay? You will have your own assigned system. And according to the NISPOM, you have to be local to the system you manage, okay? Uh, you'll typically receive, and, and I mentioned this, uh, an appointment letter that may be signed by your chief information security officer. You know, you're gonna do a lot of stuff, including, you know, you're working with POAMs and all those other things that we just talked about. Uh, you will have people reporting to you as well, okay? You're gonna have specialists reporting to you. And you're going to be, you're gonna see your role in major, cybersecurity policies in the organizations like the enterprise access management policy, where you may see something like this. As an ISO, your responsibility would be to approve system authorization access requests based on number one, status of the person's cyber awareness training. Okay, they, they have to have had the training and also on the fact that they have the requisite uh, DOD certifications. Uh, that are listed in the 8140, okay, and any other kinds of requirements that they will need before an individual can get access to your system, okay, or the system that you're uh, responsible for, partly responsible for. Now, let's look at the ISM, okay, the Information System Security Manager. Now, this is the person who will likely uh, hire you, appoint you, find you, you know, pick you to come and work with them. Now, this person is responsible. So the ISM, uh, for example, when you have your weekly, bi-weekly meetings where all the information systems get together, let's say you have multiple information systems in your organization, you all come together to give the status. You know, you're speaking to the CISO, you're speaking to the CIO. Um, you know, you have all the, all the decision makers there because they want to hear well, what's the status of the system, okay? Now, so you... I'm sorry, the ISM, the ISSM will be the person overseeing all of that, likely, okay? Now, the ISSM may be technical, okay, but they may not be, and they don't have to be really, because this is, their training involves technical stuff, but it also involves a lot of policy, okay? They have to be really on point when it comes to the policies that govern these information systems which is where you come in when they're not very technical or even if they are technical, they have so much, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're in more of a leadership position, okay? Where they're doing a lot more decision-making than actually putting their hands on things and configuring them, okay? That now they need you, okay? That's where you come in. Um, so, so they have to appoint a technically competent ISO to configure and manage the systems. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Can I fix that right here? So, they, so you all have to manage these systems. Okay, let me fix it now while I'm here. S-T-E, I don't want to cap, E-M-S, okay. To verify the controls are in place and operating, operating 
and an ISM may supervise dozens or hundreds of you, people like you, okay? Now, an ISO, an ISSO, you all make some pretty good money for the work that you do, okay? You, you're compensated very well in, in many places. So let me show you right here. Here I have right next to your information, a job announcement for a senior ISSO. Look at how much that pay is, eighty to $200,000 a year full-time, okay? Uh, to do the work that you do, okay? That, that we're talking about right here. That's not too shabby, uh, okay? Um, that's not too shabby at all. All right, now let me go back to the search so I can, I can get to all those other things that I'm talking about here. Okay, now we talked about that. We went through the RMF stuff here. We talked about the information system security uh, manager. Okay, over here, the security plan. Okay, you're, of course, you're absolutely 100% involved in this. So you have to prepare this uh, in a lot of places, okay? Um, and if you're working in the federal government or in, you know, some of the military branches, you may be familiar with EMAS. Okay, you're going to be there. You're going to become intimately involved with EMAS. Okay, and I, don't, I forget what that acronym stands for, but intimate. You hear me? You, you know, you're going to have to propose or something. Y'all going to be so close. And of course, the POAM process. Okay, almost everybody's involved in the POAM process. Okay, even me in policy. Okay, <laughs> I, I I deal with POAMs more than that I know what to do with. Okay, so absolutely responsible for preparing POAM POAMs, which most are generated in EMAS, but some are generated outside of EMAS. Okay, and you're also going to be working with with your cyber defense operations group, or you know whatever you call that group. When it comes to incident response, okay, you're going to have to be right there. Now, over here, I talk up now. This right here, I'm going to have to uh, delete that again. For your incident response, right? Now, when we talk about scope of your information system and categorization levels, CISOs, chief information security officers are very, I mean, they're looking for this right here. Okay, they, this is what they don't want to see. Okay, but if they see this, this has to be remedied immediately. Okay, they want to know what's going on, why is it like that, and what needs to happen so that we can no longer be at a category one or two. Okay, uh, for the most part, right? So they're very, very concerned about your systems, uh, you know, being such that they're you don't have any cat one or two findings. Okay. And of course, I'm going to add things in here regarding to uh, the vulnerability management, of course, a little bit about the pen testing where you're involved in all that. Um, all right, uh, let me see, what else did I have? Let me do this one more time to make sure I got to everything I wanted to get to. So there are some questions here. So again, uh, these are going to be revised as well. The questions that I have here currently, okay. Which organizational reference can an information system security officer use to help prioritize the remediation of a vulnerability found during a weekly vulnerability scan? <laughs> so I'm going to be revising these questions as well, but I just wanted to show you right now what I have in here regarding what your role is. Uh, now, when it comes to the CAP exam, but also just in general, you know, if you already have the CAP. You know, but but you just want to still you still need more information or more hands on practice with what an information system security officer actually does uh, on the day to day. OK. Um, all right. So I do have questions in here that, like I said, I'm going to revise and make sure that uh, I'm touching everything that I need to touch for all of these roles. All right. So this is what I have on this mural. I, I intend to be done revising this very soon. I don't want to give you a, a solid date, but I will be done revising this because what I want what I want every role, every person here to see. Now I took the CAP exam, okay? I, I'm not in any of these roles, okay? Because you all know I am a cybersecurity policy analyst, but I work with all of you, 
Okay, every single person, every single role that is mentioned here, I work with, especially this one, okay, the authorizing official, every single day, not a day goes by, okay, that I am not in email or face-to-face -face or teleconference communication with the authorizing official, all right? So I am intimately involved with a lot of the work that you all do. And because of where I sit in the organization, because I have such a bird's eye view as a policy person, I see where all these things come together, okay? You know, which is a lot more than any one of these roles can see, you know, based on what they do in the day to day, all right? So um, I'm taking that knowledge that I have from the bird's eye view that I have of the organization to be sure I put something together for those of you who are looking to get certified in uh, or to get the CAP exam certification or just to, you know, find out more about what your job is and how it's relevant to other people's uh, jobs in the organization when it comes to our information systems and the mission and the organization's mission, okay? All right, so that's all I have for now for the ISSO. I hope this was useful and I will work on this as fast as I can, to get it out there uh, to you. Now, let me show you this one, uh, this resource, especially if you're working in government here. If you go to the federal register and you look at the NISPOM, you'll find information in there about uh, the ISO role. Okay, I don't know if this is the most recent one, but it's the one I found. Uh, you'll find, and there's another document. Is it, D, is it the DAPM, D-A-A-P-M? Maybe that's it. But um, your organization should have that, okay? If you all deal with RMF and, and these other things. And like I said, also, we're gonna be talking about, do they mention it over here? I don't think they mention it. No, they don't mention it over here. Uh, but the other risk management frameworks that are gonna be on the CAP exam. Okay, so I hope this was useful and I will see you all back here next time. Have a good one.